All right. All Welcome, right. everybody. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us on this Friday to um, our MLS Matters, hosted by CMLS. We appreciate you taking your time, being part of the community, and uh, appreciate your contributions to the conversation and uh, really part of the, the, the solutions and helping to share your insights. Today's session is being recorded. You see that lovely red button at the top and um, all, it will be posted to our resource page along with all the previous sessions that we have. We also try to do a summary of the notes and that is on there as well and we do encourage sharing. Um, we are using Zoom meetings and you are able to speak but we do ask that you keep it on mute if you are not speaking and that you do use the chat functions or Q&A during uh, the session today uh, until we go into the breakout rooms at the end. And uh, just know that CMLS has enacted all Zoom uh, safety protocols that have been recommended. So uh, with that, um, if we move on to, um, I just wanted to take a second today as being Friday. I feel like I'm seeing, we're in this for a couple of months now and I was out the other day, this, just this little story. Um, I've been wearing my mask because I go out and um, was at the store and I just so much of, being able to interact with people and see their faces and their smiles. And I always take a little bit of, um, a little bit of pride of like just smiling at someone to try and make their day. And I thought, oh my gosh, with masks on, you can't have that kind of interaction. And I've been trying to think to myself, how can we do other ways of just trying to make people smile or these random acts of kindness and making someone's day. So I just thought I wanted to share that today as I feel like it's kind of getting a little bit honest that we've been this, you know, in this shelter in place or this, um, in this new normal for a while or in this upside down world. So just everyone think about that. I'd love to hear if you had any ideas. How are you making people smile when we're having less interaction or if we have our masks on when we're out and about? So um, anyways, just wanted to share that as I enjoy seeing all of your faces in my screen here today. And um, next is I wanna say thank you all for sharing your smiles and your faces with us the last several weeks. Um, and let you know that we are going to be um, transitioning away from doing, um, we've had eight weeks now of these MLS Matters and um, I just wanna say thank you for contributing to them. They have been amazing. I have learned so much from all of you. I've been getting this feedback about all of you learning so much still from each other and this connecting happening. And um, CMS has just been working really hard to make sure we can still support each of you and what is it that you need and how can we do that. And so um, transitioning away from doing these weekly, we do have our brings it to the table, which I'll talk to in a second, but we wanna hear from you. Well, how can we continue to support you and what does that look like? And so at the end of our uh, discussion here, I'm gonna ask our panelists to kind of share what they're thinking and what they learned, but I would love for you, if you could share in your um, breakout rooms, what, um, what, how do you see CMLS being able to um, continue to support you and uh, what, what it looks like um, going forward? So please share that with us and uh, definitely wanna hear that. And be looking, at, once we gather all that and we find out what that looks like, then you'd be on the lookout for what coming, what's coming next. Um, that said, next is our Brings It to the Table event which is next Thursday, which I'm really excited, 12 to, 1, uh, 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern time, 9 to, to 1 um, Pacific time. And if, thank you to those that are already registered. We've really got this excellent lineup. Um, we have the chief economist for the National Association of Home Builders is gonna talk to us of what are they seeing, um, consumer preference and builders starting to build so that we can be thinking about future product. Um, we've got uh, the CEO of XP Realty coming, talk about how are they adjusting and supporting their agents and brokers. Helen Hanna from, um, is gonna be on there. Um, we've got Mr. Greg Robertson, um, and it's just a really great lineup. Uh, we're gonna keep it engaging. We're gonna be asking questions uh, of audience during the time. So it will be live. There will be not be recorded sessions. So we definitely encourage you to enjoy, uh, join us during the time. and. Um, Looking forward to a fun Thursday next week. Um, and registration is still open. And the last thing before we jump into the fun is we do have, I just want to remind everything, everyone, we have the resources page. You guys have been awesome in sending in what you're doing. Um, so if anyone wants to go there and find out what someone else is doing on open houses or how they're handling different things, 
everyone is sharing stuff. So on the screen, you can see that to, to go on there and um, get some ideas and feedback. So with that, let's jump into our um, discussion today. And my panelists, welcome and hello. Today, I really wanted to um, talk about how is it that you guys have been learning, sharing from each other, um, but also uh, the community and um, if we could kick it off with uh, Trisha, if you would go ahead, introduce yourself, where you're from, and then I would love to, if you could share, begin, share with us the story of, of in your market, what you've done of, um, where did your, where did, where were some of the areas that your members needed assistance um, that maybe you weren't the expert on and how you kind of got that information and what you shared. And, and I've had the privilege of being in some of the breakout rooms with you. So kind of hearing you as that, and you've, you've tapped into this resource here. So please introduce yourself and share with a little bit with the, the members um, on today. Sure. I'm Trisha Henschen. I'm the MLS Administrator with the Northwestern Wisconsin MLS. Our association is the Realtors Association of Northwestern Wisconsin. We serve a little over a thousand members. Um, so we're kind of small. We have five employees. Um, but I guess the biggest part for us is we really utilized communication, especially with this all first starting. We're very comfortable with the surrounding MLSs around us. Um, within Wisconsin, um, in Minnesota, North Star, and then we just through CMLS and some of the other conferences have been able to um, meet other people. So we were able to reach out and communicate with them and see what they're doing, what we planned on doing. Um, we did create some broker sessions where we would do live sessions to hear from them what they're doing. There was so much concern and they didn't know where to turn when all this started happening. Um, so, myself and our AE, we opened the doors up to everybody. If they were scared and needed to talk, sometimes just allowing them to come in and talk, but really truly getting everybody's perspective on what's, what they feel and what's going on, and then going from that and creating best practices, creating Zoom meetings, creating Zoom meetings with our, our board members too. Our board members were a huge part um, in, in assisting us. Um, CoreLogic, as, as our company, was huge at assisting us with things we needed right away. Obviously, as you guys all know, we needed things and we needed it fast. And um, always coming up with a solution isn't the easiest, but um, communication was by far the biggest thing for us. Communicating with our surrounding MLSs, we really like to play nice with everybody. We push for realtors to play nice, so we as MLSs have to play nice too. <laughs> and everybody was very good about, you know, talking with us, uh, sharing their ideas. We would share our, our ideas. Um, and if we would bring in a company, we have an advertising company that we bring in to help us do some of our public marketing. Um, we were always willing to share that also. Great, I appreciate that. Um, I think we sort of started bubbling that conversation up a little bit more at CMLS is um, MLS is collaborating more, even though, you know, we're working together so we can provide better service over on a market area. So I love hearing that you're really actively doing that. Um, Jim, I know um, you had sent me some stuff where you were working and collaborating in your marketplace of even writing some, some practices of going back to work, but tell me how you were engaging your marketplaces and, and how you were leveraging maybe where you weren't strong in something, how you were accessing other partners um, to provide those resources and support to your marketplace. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Yocko. I'm the CEO in the Greater Rochester Association of Realtors and we manage the Upstate New York Real Estate Information Service, which is a broker owned uh, private MLS. We're also a founding member of the New York State Alliance of MLSs, which serves about 10,000 subscribers in the Western half of New York State. And Jim, uh, actually, can I just add one important detail? Jim just moved like two days ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he just went through the home fly process and all of this. He has two small children. Sorry if that is too much, but I just think that's really relevant to uh, what we're all living through right now. If I look exhausted, that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the interesting about this current situation, the 
the the biggest challenge really for us was legal. Uh, you know, New York State was at the beginning certainly the the focus of all this. Um, but even though we're a five hour drive from Manhattan, we're under the same restrictions that Manhattan was under. So our members were uh, kind of thrown for a loop very quickly and everything stopped instantly. But uh, what we discovered was none of these restrictions were covered by MLS rules or covered by code of ethics. They're, they're really uh, state health department issues. And so there's no, there's no way for us to really enforce some of these things that the governor is telling people they can and can't do. And it created a lot of confusion. So I spent far more hours on the phone with our attorney those first two weeks than I cared to and just discussed and debated. And, you know, from his standpoint, there's no legal precedent either for this. So there's really very little guidance we could give. Uh, luckily, our state association has a really strong legal department. And so they, they put out some good guidance. <clears throat> but most of the first two weeks were just taking calls from members um, asking, you know, what can I do? What can I do? Uh, and, and it's hard when you can't give them any solid answers. So what helped us most was hearing from other people across the country who had similar issues, you know, through the MLS Matters weekly meetings, but also uh, one of our, one of the other AEs in New York set up a weekly call for just the AEs to kind of share what was going on. And when you hear that, you know, it's the same situation all over. Everybody was kind of confused. No one had great answers. It was developing by the hour at first and then by the day. And, and until we sort of settled into to some continuity in April, it was just crazy. So <clears throat> the biggest help for me was hearing from my peers that the questions are the same, the lack of answers was the same, and we all just sort of gave each other a little moral support and a few words to say, and here's how I address this, and this seems to work with with different people. And and it was uh, it was really helpful just to have you know a bunch of sounding boards both within the state and across the country. Great. I think one thing as leaders, it can be challenging to say I don't know something, and so having that other support of hearing from others, going, okay, we all. <laughs> we don't know, but we're in this together, so we'll navigate it. Um, Lauren, would you share with us a little bit what, um, maybe some areas where you, you know, did you share, were you able to share your expertise? Did you have some learning opportunities? How, how are you navigating this um, and, and leveraging your resources? And, and I love, Jim, your story of, of hearing it all across there, right? Learning from all across the state or across the country. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on where you're from. I'm Lauren Hansen, CEO of IRIS MLS in Northern Colorado. We have 7,000 subscribers, five associations own us, and we serve seven. Uh, we also own our own development companies. We have a homegrown custom MLS system, which in recent weeks has been very handy because we could be nimble and make changes that we saw uh, as appropriate. But yeah, I, when I was thinking about this panel, I think there are a couple of really obvious statements. The first is none of us have training for what we're going through right now. This is unprecedented and we hear that word a lot, but it truly is. And you know, the, the news is dark. Uh, where our focus has been on the numbers in the US, but if you look globally, it's astounding. And the reason I bring that up is because it was pretty quickly, um, my focus was on people. And it started with our staff because going from working at the office to abruptly working from home had a lot of adjustments. I was, uh, and I'm still pleased with how easily that happened. It's almost uncanny, but our initial approach was make sure that all of our employees are comfortable and do they need something ergonomically at their home in order to make this, you know, initially 
I've got that Pollyanna side. I thought, oh, maybe a couple weeks of this and then, you know, we can get through most anything, even work on a laptop or what have you if, if uh, it's only for two weeks. Well, and as you mentioned, it's now two months. But um, so our first, my first focus was on our staff to make sure that they were comfortable and had what they needed at home to do their job. And related to that, I think it, it broadens into, frankly, mental health and checking in with each other internally and checking in with my leadership. We have a staff meeting every morning just to check in, see what webinars are going on. And I had initially offered, should we do this you know, twice a week or every other day? And the voice from our employees was, oh no, we want to do it every day because it's just like coming to these CMLS meetings. It's nice to see faces and it's nice to see expressions and people raise their hand if they have a question. We're getting better at that rather than talking over each other. But um, so I would say, it, and, and the mental health not only goes to the employees and the brokers and the leadership, but it's also amongst this group and our colleagues and admitting that you're vulnerable or like you said, Danae, that you don't have all the answers. So pick up the phone or send out an email. How are you handling this or how are you doing? Just start with that. Um, this, this is not an easy time for a lot of people for a lot of reasons, but I think we need to be kind and take care of each other. I agree. Um, and that was kind of my thing of starting it off. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit more of that, of um, adding that extra attention to kindness and patience right now. Of we, We've been there. Um, uh, Trisha, if I can go back to you and say, um, um, Share with me some of the things that you did pull together. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the marketing, but um, I know you were working a lot on the open houses. And, um, you know, how did you navigate that decision? Because you guys didn't have or the virtual tours. Like, how did you learn on that? Because I, I just watched you asking those questions within the group. And, and I'm, I'm ask, asking this is not exactly what you did, but I, I just want to make sure. I want the community to think about like, how can we continue to learn from each other and the value of it being um, these conversations? Because we're not going to have the opportunity to learn from each other in person. We're not going to meet at the lobby bar and say, hey, just sit down. I want to ask you some questions here. So like, um, I don't know, like what was the value of that? And, and how have you done that? Have you called anyone afterwards or, or even just calling your surrounding um, MLSs? Like, how is that working? And, and how are you really leveraging that? in this current situation. So you cut out for one little part about, so I'm, it might've been my internet, so I'm sorry. I really, I have great connection for the most part. Right. There was just the one part about the virtual tours. So just, I, the if that was the question, yeah. Just how sure. you went about, you were, it's, I got to watch you sort of accessing the community in the breakout rooms as making that decision process and how you implemented that within your own organizations. Sure. And I thought you would just share um, with the community, like how valuable they were of what I observed of you learning from your peers and asking those questions. So I don't know if you share a little bit of, of, of how that helped you and sure. what, what the process was. Yeah. So again, we, you know, everybody was kind of going through the virtual tours and what we should do and what we shouldn't. And, and one of the areas that I did reach out on, as you said, was on one of the CMLS calls because I wanted to know how people are, are they allowing branding? Are they not? If they are, how are they getting around it? Um, and then some of the points that we had made with that, because you know we did implement and we do want to keep it going forward. And one of the, the big points that I, I foresee it helping with is safety you know, doing these, allowing these virtual live streams to go ahead. And we are looking at allowing the live streams to be um, branded in the future, because really there's not a way of getting around that. And the agents are really enjoying it. It has been much easier for them. Um, 
But as far as the safety of a client's home, you don't have people walking through your home now if you can do it as a virtual live stream. Um, it's, so it is kind of a security for clients, but it's a security for agents also. So they don't have to meet people um, and, and keep that security. I mean, some people still like the face-to-face -face and, and of course there are going to be people who will come and do a, an actual showing. But this way with a virtual live stream open house, you know, not only are you helping clients that may not be able to get to that property right away to do an open house or do a showing right away that want to know that it's worth their time to travel because we have a large area. Um, but again, you're keeping your clients safe and your, your agents safe because that way they're not truly meeting with that person. And, and I think kind of on some of these live streams, you can kind of vet out a little bit of, of who is asking what questions and, you know, a lot of people tend to say or do things or give you a feeling and, and intuition is a huge thing. So I think that's where you're, you're still communicating via live stream and you're still able to talk to them. It's not just a, hey, here's this. The live stream, I think, will be a very good thing going forward along with some of the other safety apps. But even so, just to get people to reach areas that they can't. We have a lot of people who buy homes in our northern area and that travel from Illinois who don't want to make a six hour trip if it's not worth their time. So that's another way to utilize that. Great, thank you. And I think you touched on something too, of sort of two pieces to it, this, the safety of just the current situation. But I think um, something that we need to sort of be thinking about as an industry, it's not for today's topic, but just the safety of that. If we're worried, people are worried about photos being out there and all these videos start going <laughs> or so we're gonna to have to cover that conversation soon um, as well uh, Jim I wanted to ask you a question about um, you've done such a great job in the past collaborating with other organizations of finding where is like where is your strength and who's doing what and what services you can provide um, how do you see that going forward in this if maybe you know we're really having to be laser focused on what is our biggest strengths and um, what we're excellent at and rather than um the bo books uh strengths-based leadership right acknowledge like what you're really good at and don't try to get better better at what you're not great at go go find somebody who fills that hole so jim maybe speak to how you've addressed that in the past with a little bit of how you see that um going forward and collaboration between mls's and, and i'll say i've heard it bubbled up as does this cause consolidation quicker among mls's um, and I've been kind of thinking that it causes greater collaboration among MLSs with that concept. So I'd love to hear your thought. Yeah, I think that I think your last comment is is probably the better one that it fosters more collaboration. And I might argue it, it would actually work against consolidation because this situation is very, very local and bigger and broader doesn't necessarily mean you can handle this situation better so the the local touch the being in, being in communication with the local authorities um, may be an advantage here so we've always focused on that concept of we're good at certain things we're not so good at certain things i'm okay saying that i'm not that great in this or i don't want to be great in this even if i could because other people are and and so we're willing to share what we are good at, what we've developed, um, share ideas, share thoughts, work in tandem with people on any number of things. And, and we do that first and we offer, and then if opportunities arise for someone to share with us, you know, we will take them. But I think, especially in times like this, you know, we're all bombarded with so many questions and so many new things we have to do that you just don't have time to become an expert in everything. So um, I was asked by one of the, the people leading um, our region's reopening for the, for the governor of New York to come up with a, a plan that I could submit to him, he could, that he could submit to the governor. And so our leadership and I worked on this you know, for a couple of days and we came up with something we thought was pretty good, pretty comprehensive and, and hit all of the right safety and, and health metrics. So we, when we submitted it to the, you know, this regional uh, opening advisor, I sent it to 
all the other AEs in New York and, and said, hey, you know, here's what we developed. I was asked to do this. I'd love your feedback. There were a bunch of good comments, things that we missed. And we said, use it if you want. Brand it to yourself, change it, do whatever. You know, there's no ownership. There's, you know, there's nothing that we need back. Just, I was asked to do this work. I did it. There's no reason 26 other AEs in New York should have to do the exact same amount of work. And the benefit of that is now we can present a, a unified, consistent face to the governor to say, listen, real estate has it together. They've got a pretty good, fairly consistent plan on how real estate can operate safely meet the needs of the consumers even as we're just sort of tiptoeing back into a, a reopened economy and I think that helps I, I think it makes it easier for someone in that position to say okay uh, we'll let those those guys in real estate go first because they have a really good coordinated plan and we don't have to worry that it's going to be good in one county and a disaster two counties over uh, so that, that's just like one specific example, but that's our general thought is if we have an idea, we throw it out there. Uh, if we want to try something, you know, we ask if anybody wants to try it with us and we figure it out and sometimes it fails and we don't do it again. Sometimes it's great and, and we keep doing it. Great, Jim. Now that's, that's an excellent example of, um, you know, we talk about sort of that unified, unified voice and we're putting together that we are coordinated it makes for a consistent experience for not only the consumer, but then as, as an industry looking, um, just that coordinated approach, I think is of value. Um, and I, uh, Mr. John Mosey, um, I believe you are there with us as well. And I asked if I could ask you a couple questions today also. Um, I think that you have been really great over the years at reaching out and engaging the rest of the MLS community and the rest of the industry at, at doing that concept that Jim just talked about is how can we look at providing, um, you know, better, better solutions by engaging more people, getting these other perspectives than just collaborating to, to just do better. So um, with the lens of kind of what we're in right now, if you can maybe share a little bit of your thoughts of how can we continue to do that as an industry? How can we do an even better job and really advance leverage where we've come together so quickly and continue to advance what we're doing collectively as an industry, but still not miss out of that piece that Jim just talked about, how important it is still locally and that really high local touch point. Well, first I should apologize for being so late getting onto this call, but uh, this morning I was on the uh, NAR board of directors call, which uh, I don't know how I deserve that punishment, but uh, but I, I was asked to, to enjoy that experience, followed by uh, a great call I just had with uh, uh, an association executive in Arkansas who was very interested in what we've been doing in Minnesota to uh, improve the collaboration, cooperation between MLS uh, organizations. But I'd, I'd like to, I caught the tail end of Jim's uh, comments, and I, I think one of the, our experiences here might be very similar. And it was really important to the governor of Minnesota agreeing to declare or describe the real estate industry as essential and kept the doors open for business. I've, I've seen statistics from your part of the world, Jim, that are appalling uh, in terms of uh, real estate activity because your governor uh, took uh, a different uh, uh, approach to identifying the, uh, the industry as essential during this time. And the key uh, uh, development in our part of the world involved our state association taking the lead along with our largest brokers, where, we, where I had a call on a Saturday morning from uh, one of the largest brokers in our market saying, we need your cooperation to help us take down the open house scheduling function as soon as possible because we're going into meetings with the governor next week and we need to demonstrate that we're responsible uh, in terms of uh, how, we're how we'll conduct our business going forward if we can be uh, allowed to stay in business and stay open. And uh, that was a coordinated effort between brokers, the state association, the local associations in the MLS that resulted in uh, statistics that I was just looking at that show that our new listing activity is on the upswing and has been almost from the, the day that this, this contagion was identified. 
our pending sales are on the uptick, have been uh, with, a, with one exception in the last two months, and our sales are on the uptick. And almost without interruption, um, a spring market like prior spring markets. And, uh, and uh, all of that to, due to the collaboration between the parties. So I think that was somewhere where you were going, Jim. I, as I said, I got a little bit late on, on that call, but huge, I think a huge difference. Yeah, that is what we're seeing when there was that coordinated effort of just looking um, the cohesive nature of coming together with that that plan. Um, I'm, that is what I'm hearing back from the different areas around the country is when that's happening. It's made a significant difference. Um, and, and so, um, Lauren, would you maybe share a little bit, and I'm seeing some chat in there about the um, the, the mental health and the anxiety stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll maybe touch on that a little bit before we go into our breakouts because uh, I do think that would be, <laughs> uh, that is an interesting conversation for sure. Is, um, but Lauren, if you would talk about, you were CMLS chair um, a few years back and having the opportunity to interact with so many individuals from across the country um, versus when you are the CEO of IRIS, and, and how did you see that interaction differently? Um, what was some of the highlights of that? And what did you appreciate? And then what do you miss today? And, and, and I would ask that you utilize, you know, share that in the way of how important it is to continue to foster that. And, and like in these breakout rooms, I heard someone I was talking with, um, a gentleman yesterday saying that, um, I think it was Alan, I, I spoke with him yesterday, is, being able to actually go speak to people after they give a presentation or something or meet them and we're not having that opportunity now. So um, how can we leverage learning from each other? How can we leverage connecting with each other across the country um, in this screen space? <laughs> meet people when we don't have drinks to do it over. Well, it's an interesting tie-in because I've, um, up to now, it's, I have been a bit Debbie Downer, and I really don't mean to do that, but I do think it's worth pausing and realizing we're all in a strange, serious world. What I miss about the CMLS board, and I compliment you for these interactions and particularly the breakout rooms where you can have conversations, is sitting around a table and hearing not only from colleagues, but from all over the country and how it's being handled. And in fact, when Jim was talking and he used the word consistent and state in the same sentence, that has not been our ball game in Colorado. It's been all over the map from the wild west to lockdown. And uh, covering several counties in our region, it isn't even consistent within our area. So for us to answer questions has been next to impossible. And it goes back to, uh, I think it was an earlier CMLS um, webinar or presentation where Brian Barrero said, uh, stay in your lane. And man, have I used that because I mean, we could all be delivering, you know, community food share things. And I mean, it, it, there's no end to what we could be doing, but um, collaborating on a local level, state level, pick up the phone and with collaboration, one of the things we tried to do early on is get some consistency with coming soon policies in Colorado. It certainly wasn't a mandate from anyone, but if we one more time think about our customers, the more consistent that we can be, the better off everyone is going to be because then they don't, as if they straddle MLSs or belong to more than two, they're also juggling the various rules. So we tried to get some consistency with that, particularly along the, as they call it, the front range of Colorado, uh, which is sort of a line north-south on the east side of the continental divide. But um, yeah, did that answer your question? I really don't mean to be Debbie Downer, and I do want to interject one thing. So in taking care of my people, which are my employees and staff, 
Yesterday, we had uh, baby goats as a Zoom during lunch. There is a, and it's absolutely brilliant, but this is the kind of stuff that we're keeping our eyes open for. It's a nonprofit. You can make a donation and then you just log in and watch baby goats. It was great. And they loved it. So I just, I wanted to kind of counterbalance Debbie Downer, sorry. Counteract. Debbie Downer with Baby Goats. It's a pretty good job. I'll take that. <laughs> Can I add one thing? Absolutely. Please do. Uh, interesting to hear Lauren talk about mental health, and, and I think she's absolutely right. Uh, we really took the approach early on that we were just trying to reassure the brokers and the agents. Um, it's the same concept, just different words, but that was that was really the the first need was reassure everybody that we're on it. We're talking to the right people. We're talking to the state. We're talking to the state association. We're talking to the county health department and that we will let them know anything confirmed, verified, and factual as soon as we know it. And they didn't have to panic or find all that information on their own. And you know, for many years, both MLS and association, we've been talking about what's our value proposition and, and all of that. And I, I think that was my biggest revelation the first two weeks is, you know, I've, I've been with this association 22 years and I spoke to more people that I had never heard from the entire time uh, in that first two weeks. And they knew who to call and they knew how to get a hold of us and they knew the right questions to ask. And, and what sank in for me is that is maybe the biggest value proposition we have is we're like the, the place everybody can go to be reassured and to, to kind of have their, uh, they can ask their questions, they have a, a trusted voice. And, and so that was how we approached it from then on is just, we need to reassure staff and brokers and agents that we're on top of it. We'll share everything we can as soon as we can. We're not gonna react to rumors. We're gonna verify everything. Um, we didn't have to walk back any bad information. Uh, and I, I think that that goes a long way towards the future of the MLS is, I, I look at it like AAA. You, you know, you hope you don't have to rely on them, but you know they're there. And you know, day to day, brokers and agents may think they don't need us, but as soon as things go wrong, they know exactly who to call. And that's us. And, and I think that's re reassuring to us and allows us to reassure them. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Um, Could I say one more thing too, real quick? And then I, I know we have to get... No, I was going to say, you look like you, yes, please do. Okay. I just actually want to thank you, Danae, and all of CMLS, because as we were talking about keeping the peace of mind and, and keeping sanity, um, and I'm sure everybody else can agree, these phone calls have been amazing. Um, then we do realize that we are not the only one going through it, even though we know that everybody else is, but being able to talk with everybody else and see what they're doing, um, not just within our state, but all over to see what other people are doing. Some, I mean, like Colorado is definitely going through a lot harder of a situation than we are here in Wisconsin. You know, so I, I do just want to commend you guys for putting this all together and keeping it going because this has been a huge help for peace of mind, I think, for all of us, all of us. Just so thank you very much. Thank you, Trisha. I appreciate it. And, and, and I have to thank you guys because, you know, we can post these. If no one shows up, they're not that valuable. So, so, so thanks for showing up, guys. Um, and then, Mr. Mosey, I would love just to hear a last little bit from you. Um, I, Mr. Tim Dane always tells the story of how he like, um, like met you and got to know you before maybe we knew Tim Dane. And I, I feel like I'm hearing that story more and more through this of even um, what I'm seeing in these breakout rooms is maybe people who would not have met at, at in-person events of where they're just able, maybe they wouldn't have just gone up and talked to people or there are different parts of the country they wouldn't have done it. So maybe some some suggestions or ideas of how people could meet, still meet each other or just reach out if somebody had a question and picking up the phone. Um, I spoke with another gentleman yesterday about how do I know who to call to get help on that because of where they're at. And Lauren, I see your hand up too. So um, John, if you've got some thoughts on that and then Lauren, I'd, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts. because I really wanna continue to foster that of us not having those opportunities of how do we still have them? 
Well, I, <clears throat> I've always found uh, over the years I've been involved in this that uh, the bar is the greatest place at all to, to uh, make those connections. And, uh, and what do we do? All, of, all of us who know uh, uh, Greg Robertson, uh, uh, he, he labeled the, uh, the meeting point uh, uh, and those who participated in, in that meeting point as the lobby bar all stars. And uh, after a lot of years in this industry, I, I think I qualified as an all star <laughs> and, uh, and would like to get back to that, uh, <laughs> to that practice. Uh, right at the moment, it feels like uh, uh, the last dance, like the uh, Michael Jordan uh, deal is that we're all looking back at uh, those great times. But as far as the uh, opportunity to reach out and make those connections, uh, um, you know, a lot of it is, is event driven. You know, there's, there's things driving us towards uh, uh, things we're trying to accomplish uh, respectively. And we've, all of us have had that kind of experience. And it's, it's really a question of finding out or discovering or meeting people that had, has gone through what you're uh, attempting to address right now and, and leveraging that, learning from what others have done. There's things that work and things that don't work and things that you can try uh, and fail, but you can smooth the way as we, uh, uh, by virtue of the connections and, and the knowledge of the others. One other comment, I think, and this goes to a conversation we had uh, the other day, Danae, is there are so many um, initiatives active in the industry right now that some are, um, are you know, in the mode of full disclosure, this is what it is, this is how it works, and some are siloed as they move forward in terms of achieving whatever agenda they've set. And I, I'm, I struggle with that because in some respects, it appears that we're competing to accomplish something uh, so that I got there first as opposed to somebody, uh, somebody else. And I think that's so self-defeating is that at the end of the day, it's the guys who uh, we all work for that benefit or are harmed by us not doing things uh, collectively. And uh, that's, that's something I'd like to see overcome before I hang up my cleats. <laughs> um, I totally echo that. Uh, two things I wanna add on to that is that the, one of the very best things about this industry is how willing everyone is to share. If somebody picked up and called someone, somebody from your team, John, of like, how do you do this? I'm not sure on this. I know they'd be willing to help. So I just encourage and say that that is, that is just an absolute foundation of this industry, people willing to share. Um, and then to your point about celebrating everybody's success together and MLS is collaborating. I, I spoke about that. My, my opening at CMLS last year was let's celebrate all those initiatives that MLS is or anybody's doing to help further our industry. Let's celebrate the advancement and the innovation. So I would echo that. And then Lauren, you had some, some comments. So. Well, I think John read my script because actually it was going to be a shout out to uh, Greg and Katie because I forget how far into it we were, but they had the first lobby bar Zoom and it truly was a light switch for me because all of this head down in your own world myopic and yet trying to take care of lots of different tentacles in the business, it was an opportunity to have social time and laugh. And uh, we all, you know, had our drinks and toasted and, and I thought, okay, so there's a whole different facet to remote socialization that is, uh, Anyway, I, I shout out because it, it truly was a turning point for me where I just, I felt like the light bulb was on top of my head. Like, oh, there's lots of things we could do as a result of this. So anyway, that same echoing what John mentioned too. Awesome. All right. Well, before we go into breakouts, Jim, I'll give you any other uh, final thoughts. Encouragement. Uh, I guess back to the, you know, how can we work better together? My approach has always been if, if there's an idea of something new you want to try, just 
ask someone you like and get along with and work well together. They can be close, they can be far away, they can be across the country, but just throw it out there and say, hey, how about working together on this and give it a shot and don't worry if it doesn't work. Half of them don't, but keep trying. And you'll, when you find ones that do work, they're really cool. And I, and I think the thing, don't confine it to your own geography. And even if you need to call me, I do this a lot. People will call me and say, well, I'm thinking on this and I can say, oh, so-and-so over here or so-and-so over there. I like, I love the ability to connect those amazing people with their amazing ideas. And you don't, you don't need to be in the same state or whatever. It's just, how do we advance ideas and, and people, right? Yep. Trisha, any final ideas or thoughts? Um, I, I kind of just second with everybody else. Just let's all keep working together, bring ideas. And uh, if we continue these calls, keep bringing our ideas to these calls to share and, and keep listening and communicating with not only everybody here, but everybody around you, your other MLSs and really your, your participants and subscribers. Excellent. Ozzy? Yeah, Danae, I, just one thought, uh, just from something you said that uh, should be so self-evident, and I missed it entirely. And I think I missed it entirely because I've been around the business a long time and know a lot of people. And where I was going with this is that you are a hub, you personally, at CMLS, and CMLS itself, as a hub for making those connections that Jim just talked about, reaching out to find somebody who has that common problem or, or challenge. Uh, and because you, you're aware of that, um, you'd be a great resource, somebody to, to, to tap into as to where do, who do you know that would be helpful to me to have these conversations? Um, I, I guess it's habit or just, you know, reflex. Yeah, you know, I've been, I just reach out to those that I know are involved in whatever, because I know a lot of people. But if, you, if you're not, uh, if you haven't spent 45 years in this business like I have uh, yet, uh, I think <laughs> Danae might be a better way to, to, to go about making those connections. Well, thank you, John. It is one of my favorite things to do. And I do send those emails connecting great people. So anytime I can help with that, please send or the team or whatnot. My, one of my very favorite things connecting great people. So with that, um, thank you to everybody who participated today. Love it. Um, we are going to start working on getting to our magic, uh, magic button and breakout room. Um, I really encourage you all to stay and dig a little bit deeper into the conversations. You can carry on about anything we discussed today, including baby goats <laughs> or whatever might work for you. And um, we do not have any lined up, by the way, just to be clear. But uh, the virtual roundtables, if you can, when you go into those, turn the cameras on. It is very, um, I do appreciate seeing the smiles. Everyone to participate and share. We all have stuff to learn. Sometimes you're, I call it the giver or the, the taker. Like, are you, are you sharing information someone might learn from? Or are you the one like, that is learning for the day? And we, we all can be on both sides of that and share ideas, opinions. And um, we will not be here next week. There will be no MLS Matters next week because we will be saying, um, uh, we are doing Brings It to the Table on Thursday. So nothing next Friday because we will be there for Thursday's Brings It to the Table. And with that, I guess I will ask Betsy to push the magic button and we'll go into our breakouts. Thank you all, stay safe and uh, hope to see you all on Thursday.